I'm Kelly Epperson with WPAQ 740 AM, and I'm sitting here with Dean Brown, who is running for the North Ward City Commissioner seat in the upcoming Mount Airy Municipal Election. This interview is brought to you by Mount Airy Downtown Inc., MAD. MAD Inc. is a 501c3 nonprofit whose mission is to foster and stimulate economic growth and development within the city of Mount Airy's historic downtown area through a variety of strategies and activities. MAD Inc. is an award-winning North Carolina Main Street organization committed to historic preservation-based community revitalization. The MAD Inc. Board of Directors represents downtown property owners, business owners, residents, and civic leaders. The following questions will address downtown development issues that will affect the growth of the district in the coming years. Each of the nine candidates for City Council has been invited to participate and will have an equal amount of time to answer the questions. The purpose of these interviews is to educate downtown stakeholders on the upcoming election and to encourage the citizens of Mount Airy to vote in the city municipal primary on October 8th, as well as the city municipal election on November 5th. More information on the upcoming election can be found through the Surrey County Board of Elections. Question number one. The Spencer's economic development project obviously looms large, and there have been many criticisms about how the city has handled this complex project. As a potential future city commissioner, you will need to decide how best to move forward. The city owns the property and the buildings that will be left after the selective demolition of unsound structures occurs this fall. This is a two-part question. What specific steps do you think the, sh the city should now take to maximize the public benefit from this property? And how do you see those action steps affecting the downtown district? Well, Kelly, the city has already taken the necessary steps to maximize public benefit from the Spencer's building. Before one can sell the property, it must be sellable. So the asbestos must be removed and the crumbling walls must be taken care of. The event center will bring many of events to the downtown. The private investor tells one that many citizens are interested. The culinary school will bring many more people and take courses and visit the city. I have toured the apartment complex and I am amazed at the changes in the renovation of the building. It will bring more people living downtown, and this will improve downtown businesses and restaurants. And when the water and sewer lines are finished, things will move even faster, and we will see and understand the initial investment of the city. Other projects being considered include a hotel, which will fit into the area where the original hotel was planned. Parking for the new facilities will be cleaned up and made easier for those visiting the town. Downtown to, to park conveniently. Mount Airy is desperate need for hotels. The great number of our visitors come to our city, so I know a hotel will be great success. And after the city has finished the stages of clean up Spencer property, I believe that it should be listed for sale by local agents and also state real estate agents as the property for it is. There are many cities that have updated downtown mill properties with help and assistance from the School of Government. I attended a two-day workshop at Chapel Hill a few years ago and saw the way other North Carolina cities are improving their mills that were downtown. It is my prayer and faith that tells me that Spencer's projects are finished. Mount Airy businesses and private citizens will reap the results. Okay, question number two. Among the money spent on the Spencer's project, about $740,000 wasn't spent on the actual Spencer's property. Three quarters of a million dollars paid for much needed repairs 
and replacements of decades-old sewers, water lines, and storm water drainage under and around Willow and Oak Street. Essential infrastructure improvements needed to support existing properties whether the city bought Spencer's or not. The water lines and sewers in downtown Mount Airy are some of the oldest in the city, with many areas dating back to 1905, and they are failing. It's a two-part question. Will you put repair, replacement, and rehabilitation of the downtown sewer and water systems at the top of your priorities for capital improvements? And if so, how should the city pay for it? The money of Mount Airy spends on the Spencer's project should, should be separated from the $740,000, but listed under the much needed repairs and replacements of old sewers and water and town storage drainage, and not the Spencer's project itself. Improvements of this type are around the, all parts of the city and need repair and replacement. There are state and private grants that are available that could pay for some of the repairs of city water and some of the oldest sewer water drainages. If a line breaks and the water is running out the open, it may be necessary to pay for some of it from the city budget. But I do not think we should raise taxes to pay for it. If the lines are not broken, postpone replacement till the funds are available. My recent research reveals that the underground water lines are, are in the same problem that Mount Airy all over the nation. It is being addressed by Congress and the President at this time. The information I have discovered indicates that the federal government and some state governments will begin to help the hundreds of towns and cities that are having the same problem as Mount Airy is. Also, I have discovered in my research that companies that make the pipes for underground are researching and making more plastic pipes rather than steel. This will save money too. And after re researching the problem, I am convinced that the sh city should fix only those that are broken and work with the Spencer Project so that everything will work out with the Spencer re re uh, renovations. Question three. In 2013, Mount Airy joined the North Carolina Main Street Program and Mount Airy Downtown Inc. was formed to manage the Main Street four-point approach to downtown revitalization, organization, economic vitality, design, and promotion. In the last six years, we have seen significant growth downtown with 57 facades redone. 27 building rehabilitations, 15 public improvement projects, 68 net gain full-time jobs, 45 net gain part-time jobs, 27 net gain businesses, 14 business expansions, 23 housing units created, and over $3.2 million in public investment with $15.6 million in private investment downtown. MAD's work and goals are based on downtown economic development strategies that encourage historic preservation-based downtown revitalization. Two-part question. As a city commissioner, what would be your top priorities and goals for downtown over the next four years? How will those priorities support continued growth in the downtown district which accounts for the largest concentration of property value in Mount Airy. I consider the move of the commissioners to join Main Street Program and Mount Airy Downtown Incorporated was one of the most positive moves which I have and was highly in favor of as a citizen and the city commissioner. The approach to downtown renewal in the past six years has made a wonderful change to downtown. Mount Airy Downtown Incorporated is a national accredited North Carolina Main Street organization. As a city commissioner, I would say my top priorities for the Downtown Association would continue to increase the expansion of full-time and part-time jobs. There are always persons looking for those, 
Some are skilled jobs and some are retired citizens wanting a second job. And to create these jobs, the Main Street program must continually search for new investors for downtown business district. I'm not indicating either that we tear down the old buildings and build new ones, but using the much, as much of the original buildings as possible to maintain the present look of our city. Several Main Street business owners have already updated their businesses and have used the original look of the buildings. When driving to the coast, I go through towns that are boarded up more than half of the businesses. We certainly don't want Mount Airy to look like that. And I believe we should not depend on Spencer's alone, but support the downtown program to our success. I am also proud of the downtown program's enhancement of the arts, the entertainment, local wine, traditional music routes. It fosters a diverse variety of small business flavored with authentic dining experiences. Question number four. The following list of initiatives has been drawn from downtown needs and priorities identified by MAD, the North Carolina Main Street Center, and several studies that have been undertaken in recent years with tons of data, lots of maps, and many pages of citizen input. Examples, Vision Mount Airy Land Use Plan, 2004 West Side Development Master Plan, 2008 Study on Spencer's Mill Complex, 2015 Study on Hotel Convention Center Feasibility, 2015 Mount Airy Comprehensive Plan, and the Mount Airy TDA study, Strategic Direction 2020. Please simply react to each item on the list with either a thumbs up, meaning yes, I support this initiative, and please speak your answer, question mark, meaning I might support this initiative if provided more information or on a modified basis, or thumbs down, meaning no, I do not support this initiative. And again, please speak your answer. Take stock of city property and other assets that potentially could be monetized, sold or leased. Thumbs up. Identify infrastructure improvement needs and implement a plan to update aging and failing infrastructure. Thumbs up. Work with the Tourism Development Authority and other community partners to support a wayfinding plan providing updated signage for ve vehicular and pedestrian traffic. Thumbs up. Undertake a more detailed market analysis to better understand our retail trade area and identify growth opportunities that could be targeted. Thumbs up. Develop a better, more comprehensive parking plan to address the chronic shortage of downtown parking. Definitely thumbs up. Work with the community college and the public schools to promote and provide vocational and trade education and training. Thumbs up. Provide greater support for a permanent farmer's market. Thumbs up. Update streetscapes, including burying overhead power lines. Thumbs down. Develop public spaces, including pocket parks and a town commons. Thumbs down. Continue greenway connections or expansions through the downtown area. Thumbs up. Continue to support festivals and other events sponsored by nonprofit civic organizations. Thumbs up. And in closing, please briefly elaborate on any of these topics and provide a closing comment. On number H, updates streetscapes. Our streets are so narrow 
there's not very much we can do. We've traveled to other cities and viewed their changes and their little parking places, but anything we do will crowd and take away parking in the streets. Uh, on the development of public space, including pocket parks and a town's common, we just don't have the room. We have one vacant lot in the downtown area and it's past the post office. It's not a convenient location. The only thing we can depend on will be something at Spencer's property.